Welcome all of you guys to Celebrate Sausage Season 3. We've been kindly invited by two guys in a cooler YouTube channel to bring you this beautiful video where we're going to make some traditional drubos. We are South African YouTube channel X Man and Co. all the way in South Africa. It's a rainy day today and it's a perfect setting for drubos. Before we carry on, we need to thank two guys in a cooler for this invitation. We really appreciate the opportunity to bring you guys some great content. Guys, if you haven't, go check out. They've got a beautiful channel, curing meats, sausages, different methods. It's truly amazing. Hop over, share some love, do that like button if you do like it, and obviously subscribe so you always have access to great content. Druvors is a traditional South African snack. It's coriander seed based, spice wise, and it is truly amazing. Us South Africans, we enjoy it around a braai with friends, anytime snack. It seriously is a great snack. Druvors, direct translation, is dry vors. To English, dry sausage. Now, druvors basically consists of beef that's been ground, added some spices, and then put into a number 22 casing. There's different casings you can use. We're using a natural hog casing here today, and guys, it's going to be brilliant. We've got about 2.2 kilograms of beef here today. We've used the flap cut of the beef. Now guys, the ratio to fat is basically 70-30. I won't suggest that you go 60-40. 70-30 normally is perfect. This meat is not getting cooked today. It's going to be cured. Normally it takes two to three days. As always, let me introduce you guys to all the ingredients we have here. They will be listed in the description below. So I'm just going to run through a few of them. We've got some brandy here today. That's a twist from your traditional recipe. We've got some Worcester sauce. A curry hand is definitely a must. Some salt, nutmeg, cloves. We've got some ground pepper here. We've got cayenne pepper. That's really going to bring us that spiciness that we really enjoy on a drobos. We also have some cold water. And this, guys, that's all you're going to need. Now, traditionally, you wouldn't need all of these ingredients. We do have another video that you're welcome to go check out on our channel, x Man & Co. if you want the traditional recipe for dry balls. Without further ado, let's start making beautiful dry balls. We're going to start off by cutting your meat into small cubes. Now, the smaller the cube's going to be, the better it's going to be and easier it's going to grind. So basically, you want to make sure that your beef is smaller in cube size than your funnel, the hole that you're going to grind your meat today. You can see that we've got fat integrated in this meat and that's why we chose this cut. If you do not have as much fat and you still need to make up that 70-30 ratio, I suggest that you use some beef fat to make sure that you make up 70-30 ratio between meat and fat. Making drovors only consists of beef. We don't want to add any pork. We do make burovors in South Africa and then we do use some pork. For this, you don't want to use pork because what will happen is your pork might go rancid. You don't want that making drivels. Now that we've cut all our meat into beautiful small little cubes, it's time to move on to the next step. For drivels, we only want to ground this beef once. Some guys might go for a second time, but we really find that going through it once is perfect. Another thing to remember, you are more than welcome at this stage to add all your spices. We don't like doing that. We're going to add our spices once all of this meat is ground properly. A few things to remember. Our meat, we made sure that it was in the fridge. It's a nice cold day here today, so it's not a huge issue. But you don't want to use room temperature or warm meat as your fat is going to sit right at the end here on the disc and you're going to have to end up cleaning your disc every so often. We also take other precautions. So what we do, you can see all these parts here in front of our grinder basically the parts that the meat's going to move through we put it in ice cold water and that's definitely going to aid you and help you to make sure that your fat doesn't get stuck at the end gets like all room temperature and just clogs up this whole process the next step we're going to grind all these cubes of meat and we're going to put it through a four mil grinding disc now guys you could use a six mil but out of experience for drovors you need really fine piece of meat at the end. It really needs to be ground to a fine consistency. Now that we have our ground beef, it's time to add all the spices. We've got some whole seeds, coriander seeds here, and we need to grind them to a very fine consistency. 
Now guys, sometimes we do roast it beforehand and you can very well do that. It's really gonna enhance the flavors. We don't wanna do that today because we've got lots of other spices here. They're definitely gonna uplift this beautiful drivels that we have here today. It's time to make the magic happen. Let's introduce all of these spices in the ground beef. Some coriander, some salt, some nutmeg, some cloves, ground pepper, some cayenne pepper, some cold water, some brandy, some brown vinegar, some Worcester sauce. Another very important tip here guys, when working with this ground beef, this mixture, you don't want to compact it at all. So if you look at this motion here, this is what you want to do. You want to take your fingers like that and just mix it like that. We're just going to do this for two, three minutes and then make sure that all of these spices are nicely mixed in between all the meat. You are also welcome to lift it like this, but we don't want to compact it at all. You want to make sure that it's nice and fluffy and this is the right consistency that we're looking for. Once it's nicely mixed up, the next step is to go and prepare our casings. You want to wash your casings with some water, so we run water through it because obviously your casings most probably had some salt on it. Once we've done that, it's time to move over to the sausage filler. You want to maybe rest your ground beef mixture for about 30 minutes in the fridge and just let it mingle so that all the spices do their work and enhance this beautiful dish with beautiful flavors. Now that your ground beef is in your sausage filler, we're ready for the next step. We've put our casing 22, a number 22, onto the filler neck here. We made sure that it's nice and wet. And guys, don't forget to wash your casing. You can just run some water through it, make sure it runs right through it till the end, and then we're good to go. At this stage, this is a two-person operation, so I'm gonna ask Co to come over and give us a hand. So we're gonna go ahead, fill this casing, and then guys, it's where the magic happens. We're gonna move over to our dry box. It's gonna be brilliant. You want to remove all the air, so just hold it at the end like this, two fingers, and then it takes a bit of time to get the consistency right. You want to get more or less the same thickness. So you're just going to feed the casing. Unfortunately, guys, this takes time, but you know what? After the first two minutes, you're going to know exactly what to do. Now that all the casings are done, they're nicely filled. We've got just about almost some drivels. Not really, it needs to cure. Guys, this is a curing process. It's going to take between two to three days. This is a home built drying box. I do have a video on that. If you guys want to go check out X-Man & Co, go check it out. If you don't know how to build this, otherwise you can buy one. This is just very easy to make and therefore we made our own. So there's a few ways to do this. One way is you're going to take your sausage and run it just over the top like this. And that works very well. Otherwise you can hang it over these rods that we've got here and then it's time for the curing process. To help with all the drippings that might occur, we've got some paper at the bottom here just to soak up all of that. So if there's a lot of drippings in about a day's time, we will remove the bottom newspaper that we've got here and we will just replenish that. Let's get all of our sausage links in here and then this bad boy is ready to cure. One thing to remember guys, when you hang your sausage, make sure they do not touch the sides or each other. Where they do touch each other, you're definitely gonna have a problem with the curing process. It's not gonna be ideal. You'll notice we've got a light and we've got a fan. Basically, you are extracting all the air, it's coming from the bottom, and that creates the airflow that's gonna help with the curing process. The light is just gonna aid as we've got very humid conditions. It's really going to help and dry up the air. It's not for the heating process. Remember, this is a curing process, no heat involved. Two, three days, these bad boys are going to be brilliant. Okay. The fan's running, the light's on. Now we just have to wait. I'll see you guys in a bit. We made our dry horse. We left it for three days to dry in the Boltung dryer. And today is the right moment for us, day three, to check it out. Normally day three is just perfect for us. If you guys feel you need to have it a little bit more dry, you can leave it for four days, five days. We won't go past five days. Five days normally for drivels is perfect and dry. 
Let's go check out what they look like. So guys, there you go. This is what our dry walls is looking like. This is just the shape, the way it was hanged. And as you guys can see, it just breaks off. This is day three. Perfect. Look at that. This is the way traditionally how we like dry walls. There's so many different recipes out there and this is just one of them. And we are so ready to taste this. You could use a knife or you can just break it. So let's have a look there guys. Look how easy it breaks. I hope you guys can see. You can see there's some fat content in between. The ratio over here is perfect. This is the way we know it. Let's have a taste. Mm. This is beautiful. Mm. I can really get the cayenne pepper coming through. It's not chilli, but it's definitely giving that little bit of smokiness. The coriander, the earthly flavours are definitely coming through. You can't taste the brandy, but boy oh boy, I can tell you, it's really elevating the taste, as this is different to the traditional way. Guys, you have to try it out. You've seen how easy it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Another great thanks to two guys in the cooler. We really appreciate the opportunity to bring you this video. Once again, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. On that note, if you like what you're doing, guys, like, share, subscribe. Enable those notifications so you get notified as soon as we upload a new video. Thanks for watching. We cannot do it without you. We'll see you on the next one. Beautiful.